In this video, we're going to go back to doing old exam problems. It's going to correspond to problem 2.3.10s in the sixth edition of Brogerman, where we are comparing accumulated values of two investments where interest is actually reinvested in new accounts, and those reinvested interest amounts are form an arithmetic sequence of values. So you're going to need to uh, watch the uh, video number 50 if you want to see the formula that we're going to use here, or maybe you already happen to know it. So we've got two people. We've got Susan and we've got Lori. Susan invests Z at the end of each year for seven years in an account with an effective annual interest rate of 5%. Interest credited at the end of each year is reinvested in a new account with an effective annual rate of 6%. The accumulated value at the end of seven years is X. How about Lori? Lori invests the same amount Z at the end of each year, but for 14 years, in a different account with a lower interest rate of 2.5%, she also reinvests. The interest credited at the end of each year is reinvested in a new account with an effective annual rate of 3%. And the accumulated value of her account at the end of 14 years is y. The goal is to calculate the ratio y divided by x of these two amounts. All right, take it piece by piece. Let's look at Susan first. She's got this seven-year timeline. Let's go ahead and write all the numbers for Susan. We won't write all the numbers for Lori. She invests Z at time one, time two, time three, time four, time five, time six, and time seven in this account that earns interest at 5%. At time one, right after she makes, um, well, okay, at time two, right after, uh, right before she makes her second deposit, she's going to invest, reinvest the interest she earns between time one and time two in a new account at time two. How much is that interest? Well, Z is sitting there from time one to time two. 5% of Z is 0.05Z. So that's the amount that she invests in this different account at time two. From time two to time three, she's got 2Z in the account that is earning interest from time two to time three. 5% of 2Z is 0.1Z. And that's what gets reinvested in this different account at time three. And then it will be 3z that's sitting in here between time three and four. She'll earn 5% of that, which is 0.15z. That's what gets reinvested at time four, etc. At the end, at time seven, she deposits 0.3 times z into this different account. All right. Um, let's write down then an expression for the accumulated value here for her account. Uh, the name for that quantity is x. First of all, from the first account, she's got all seven of these deposits, seven times z, and since she reinvested the interest in a different account, she doesn't have any interest left over from this account. Seven z is the quantity, the amount, or the value of this account at time seven. But what about what's going on here? Well, okay, let me write it this way, 0.05z times something. What is that something? Well, recall from video number 50 that we were talking about arithmetically increasing annuities where the deposits or payments were 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. 0.05z um, multiplied by 1 would give you this quantity, multiplied by 2 would give you this one, multiplied by 3 would give you this one, etc. This is 0.05z times that kind of annuity that we looked at in video number 50. And the future value of that increasing sequence was denoted by IS sub n, where in this case, how many payments do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, six payments. In this other account that's got an interest rate of 6%, let me put the interest rate here. So this is what x is. Um, we don't know what z is, but we won't have to know what z is in the end because it's going to ultimately cancel out when we do the ratio. Let's go ahead and factor out the z and figure out what's left over inside the parentheses here. We do need now the formula that was derived in the last video for what this future value equals. This future value of an increasing annuity immediate uh, actually has a formula that involves an annuity due sn double dot minus n over i. Um, so we are talking about the other account here. So this is um, 
I is 0 0.06 here. Sn double dot, recall, has formula a 1 plus I, which is 1.06, to the nth power, n is 6 here. Uh, then minus 1 divided by d, the discount factor, discount rate, I should say, which is I over 1 plus I. Let's go ahead and figure out what that is. 0 0.06 divided by 1.06. Get my calculator out. 0 0.06 divided by 1.06. D is 0 0.0566. Let me carry more, carry more decimal places here. 0 0.0377. That is D. And that's what goes down here. Subtract N, which is 6, divide by I, which is 0 0.06. This is the thing we have to calculate and multiply by 0 .07, 0 0.05 and then add 7 to figure out what z gets multiplied here to find x. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. I think I'm going to store the value of d in register 0. Store in register 0. Let's go ahead now and do 1.06 to the sixth power minus 1 divided by d, which is stored in register 0. So divide by, recall, 0. Subtract 6 and then divide by 0 0.06. Divide this by 0 0.06. It looks like this quantity is 23.23026275. Multiply that by 0 0.05. Add 7. Looks like what we have here is 8.16153. That should be good enough times x, or times z, excuse me. That's what x equals. Now let's go to Lori's. It's going to be a similar kind of analysis for Lori. And her future value, y, will also depend on z in a linear way. And we'll be able to divide the two equations, and the z will cancel out, and we will get a final answer for the ratio y divided by x. So hers goes for 14 years. Z is still the amount that, depo that gets deposited. We still reinvest interest from time 2 to time 14. The reinvested amount, um, let's see, she reinvests the interest and her interest rate is 2.5%, so it's 0 0.025Z right here, 0.05Z right there, then 0.075Z and 0.1Z, etc. If you figure it out, at the end it's going to be 0.325z. Uh, one way to see that is 0.325 minus 0.025 is 0.3, and you've got 12 steps of 0.025 to get up to there. 12 times 0.025 is 0.3. If you can't see that quickly, it's something you're going to have to spend time thinking about. Um, so what is y here for Lori? What is her future value? It's, well, 14z from the 14 deposits up here plus 0.025z times is, how many of these payments are there? 12, uh, 14 minus 2 plus 1 is 13. There's 13 payments there at an interest rate of 0 0.03. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate this. This quantity right there is going to be S13 double dot minus 13 divided by 0 0.03. That'll be 1.03 to the 13th power minus 1. What is the D, the discount rate for this situation? 0 0.03 divided by 1.03. 0 0.03 divided by 1.03 is D is 0 0.029 That's what goes here, 0 0.029 I'm going to store that in register 0, like I did with the last one. Subtract N, which is 13, divide by I, which is 0 0.03. All right, we're getting close here. Let's see what this ends up being. So take 1.03. 
to the 13th power minus 1 divide by what's in register 0 subtract 13 divide by 0 0.03 Looks like this quantity right here is 102.8774721. That now has to get multiplied by 0 0.025. And then you need to add 14 to it ultimately. Looks like what we have here in the end is 16.57194 times Z. That's what Y is. Now we can calculate the ratio y divided by x, 16.57194z, divided by what was up here, right there, 8.16153z. The z's will cancel. So in the end, I just divide those numbers, 16.57194, divide by 8.16153. Oops, that's a mistake. Let's try that again. 16.57 194 divide by 8.16153. That's better. It's about 2.03. And that is the answer for this ratio y divided by x. So the main thing here is it's kind of a difficult problem to think through and, and problem solve. And you also need to realize we need to use this formula for the future value of an increasing annuity.